what's going on in finance and fintech these days that could be relevant for our audience? In terms, I guess, of news that's been coming out on the fintech scene, obviously online lenders has been a dominant topic, and I've received pictures from a lot of folks, probably even some people who were in this room on that subject. It's going to be dominant for the rest of the year, I think. Um, in terms of looking forward, a couple of the things that I'm really excited about are online wealth managers, because it's a humongous space that banks have been in and competed with one another for decades in. But much like disrupting the insurance salesman out of the process, it's going to happen to a lot of wealth managers. And a lot of people who manage smaller pools of capital are going to, in all likelihood, find themselves out of work because they're going to get automated out of that. And the last thing that I would say is probably the most exciting topic for the next five years would be how blockchain is going to be integrated into every investment bank and the role that it's going to have within their individual infrastructures. Excellent. Very helpful. Is anyone reading anything else in the headlines that they might want to share they think is important for our audience, just for some context setting? I think from where I sit, one of the things uh, that's interesting, because we, we've been operating historically in London, which, in case you haven't heard, considers itself the fintech capital <laughs> of everywhere. And just understanding the nuances between conversations happening there in terms of adoption and regulation and innovation and what's happening here, uh, really out of New York. So I, I, I'm enjoying kind of the global view. I think um, I'm paying attention to Brexit. Uh, we're thinking about what that might mean for the fintech community in London and for elsewhere in Europe. And obviously regulatory issues too. I think, we were, I was just chatting with Maria from UKTI about this uh, before we started today, about uh, how the FCA in the UK has done a great job of creating a sandbox uh, so that startups and incumbents and regulators can play and innovate. And I think these are all things that I'm kind of tracking from a UK Euro point of view that I think increasingly US media and US influencers in this space are gonna be paying more attention to and blockchain. Yeah. Maybe stay down there. Just Paul, you're just back from a very important event for Pershing, the Insight event. Yeah, one of the big concerns, obviously, around the regulation is the DOL rule. Um, and uh, you know the, what the implications are going to be, particularly on the broker-dealer side. RIA is sort of already adhere to that fiduciary standard. Um, and the role technology really is going to play. You know, One of the big things um, that's been brought up time and again in the news is because of the potential um, cost of these regulations, those investors who have lower balances may be left out there um, you know, without advice. So there's a big role that technology is definitely going to play in servicing um, that the lower levels of investment, um, we like to say entry level, we don't like to say lower levels, um, you know, entry level investors. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see you know, how the rule finally takes shape and uh, what that's going to mean. But the technology is definitely going to play a role in that. Chris, even before this meeting, we were talking about all of the um, kind of reverse bids you might get, what you receive from an advertiser in terms of how they might want to present themselves through the Wall Street Journal. So um, maybe we ask the question of who, who do you consider the audience? Who's your audience? Um, and, and how do you make that audience relevant for... Uh, the, the, the communicators and publishers you see here in the audience. So I think if I was answering that question a few months ago, I'd probably list a whole litany of stats for you. 18.8 um, .8 million affluent users across our platforms, uh, 5.9 million C-suite executives, two and three FAs nationally, 95% of institutional investors nationally, the list goes on and on and on. Um, but more recently, we've been uh, answering that question with, with a single word, and that's members. Um, we've been looking at our company through the lens of membership now for about a year, and that's affected uh, the way that we structure our businesses and we the way we choose to invest in different products and services. Um, and I think the word members, to me, speaks to a different uh, relationship, a deeper relationship between uh, our customers and our brand. Um, but it's also a mindset shift as well. Um, a great example is we were at uh, Sones Investment Conference last month uh, as, as a media sponsor, and we ran an ad uh, in, the, in the conference program, one of those word jumbles where you have all the letters kind of mixed up, and you have to find words in the whole mess. And um, there were a few that were um, uh, highlighted for our, our WSJ Pro financial regulation product, FSOC, uh, CFPB. And um, the tagline was simply, if you can't find six more of these uh, words, this ad's not for you. So that idea of, uh, <laughs> of members who want brands that challenge them, right, and, and, and brands that then reward them for succeeding in that challenge um, is a mindset shift that we're um, starting to internalize when it comes both to, co both comes to our uh, brand marketing efforts as well as to the uh, solutions that we develop for our advertisers. Well, if I may, I'm going to say thank you to our panelists. Perhaps you'd all join me in thanking them.
Thank you.